Hey, welcome or welcome back. I'm Tamara. I love to knit. You're about to see some evidence of that. Um, we're about halfway through the year, so I thought it would be fun to just look back on all the things that I've knitted in 2023 so far. If you've been following along with my YouTube from the start, first of all, thank you. And second of all, um, you've probably seen all of these projects before, at least at some stage, but I did want to share like Am I getting use out of it? How many times have I actually worn it? Because that's not really something that you necessarily know when you first finish something. But I'm gonna go through them pretty much chronologically. And I'll also share um, my outfit right now. I got a little dress on with a vest over it. I knitted this vest last fall and it is in Wool and the Gings Merino Wool, Superwash Merino Wool. And I love this vest. I weirdly didn't wear it very much in the fall for some reason. I find myself like, looking for sweater vests more in the spring and usually it's when I want to wear like a summery dress but it's not quite warm enough yet. I think they're just like a really nice layering piece for that because basically if you put a vest over a dress you get like a new skirt out of it. So anyway let's get into all the projects. Hilariously the very first project that I wanted to show I cannot find it in my house which is concerning because I don't know where else it would be. So um, it's a sheer mohair shrug that I knitted with Knit Picks Aloft Mohair. Um, I knitted it like starting from the center of the back on a provisional cast on and then I knitted each sleeve and I added little yarn over holes along the um, neckline because I was thinking I would be able to attach it to my thine own top that I had made that has um, corresponding holes along the top band that you can like weave a ribbon through but I made it a little bit too tight for me and mohair, single strand mohair is like pretty delicate and I found that I just didn't reach for it because it was such a pain to put on because you like, since it's a little bit too small for me, I like gained some weight after I made it. Um, getting it over my arms when you can't really tug it on because you don't want to like damage the mohair or pull the stitches out of whack was a little bit of a challenge. So I actually haven't worn that one at all, which is really disappointing because I thought that it was gonna be something that I would reach for a lot, especially in the winter. It's kind of like a layering piece. Like if you wanna wear a tank top plus a shrug out to a bar. Um, but yeah, so I think for that one, what I would do differently next time is I would definitely just make it bigger. Um, it was just too tight. And then I also um, found that it like cut farther. I wanted it to be more of a dramatic neckline like this. I'll add a photo or a video here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about, but it ended up being like wider on my shoulders than I intended. I think part of that is just because it's so small. I wish I did more increases to get from there to here faster. Um, a little disappointed in it, but that's okay. <laughs> it's also a little frustrating because I don't love working with single strand mohair. Um, I like to knit while I watch movies, etc. And if I'm working with a thicker yarn, I can actually do it without looking, but single strand mohair is so small. It's like hard to feel without looking if your needle has actually gone into the stitch or if you've messed something up. So that's a little disappointing, but that's okay. Later January, um, I actually got really, really sick uh, right after New Year's and I was like just down for the count for like the whole first half of January. I only worked on little projects. So I made first this uh, headband. So this is using double stockinette and I the white one is Cascade 220 yarn that I had left over from a sweater that I made. And the pink is Filcolana, I wanna say it's either Tin or Tilia in bubblegum pink. Um, I had bought this to make a sweater and then decided that I didn't think that this would actually fit in my wardrobe that well. So I have a sweater's worth of this yarn color and I haven't figured out what to do with it yet. So I thought, why don't I at least just make a little headband that I could wear while I'm walking in the cold. And I added this like tapered edge in a button hole so that I could put it on really easily with bangs and not disrupt my bangs. <laughs> Ooh, that is a button. Um, and then the button was also left over from a cardigan that I made. And I wore this a ton just like a ton, basically all winter. The thing I wasn't that happy with, the edges where you're basically like joining the two sides of the fabric together, I wasn't really happy with how it looked. It just looked a little bit sloppy. I don't fully mind it on this one because it's nice to have sort of a little peak of the pink or a peak of the white. But next I made a sparkle version and you can see I actually took the button off of this one because I wasn't happy with this one. I thought with the sparkles, the messy edge just looked a lot more obvious. And then I ended up making a third one. Oh, this one is, the blue is uh, three strands. No, it's two strands of knitting for olive soft silk mohair and one strand of fingering. And that was left over from a sweater number 15 that I made. But yeah, I just felt like it was way more obvious on this one. 
And then I finally like fixed up the edge technique. I used a different one. And um, this is using one strand of Knit Picks Aloft. No, I think two strands of Knit Picks Aloft Mohair and one strand of Knit Picks Gloss Fingering. Um, so yeah, these were kind of scrap projects for me just to sort of use up some of that yarn that I had and also play around with double knitting because it wasn't something that I'd done before. And I was really happy with this sparkle chart. I felt like it kind of added, um, I don't know, maybe a little bit 80s or something. I could just picture someone wearing this with like a really cute full ski suit in a very 80s style, kind of like Bond girl. I don't know. I want to hit the slopes in this. Um, I did wear this one a lot too. So yeah, so those were fun. And I made a pattern for those called the halo headband. So the next thing that I made, this was a much longer term project. I got a little bit of my energy back uh, towards the end of January and then February. So this is the Prima pullover sweater that I made. And this one is using Barocco vintage yarn. I wanted something that was machine washable and I knew I wanted it to be in black because I was like kind of channeling a little bit of um, Regina George energy. And I also just wanted to shop at my local yarn store and that's kind of the only black worsted weight yarn that I could find. Um, this one is all in two by two rib and I had a lot of fun working with this like bust shaping. And then I also added this curved front hem. It looks a little bit goofy when it's not worn. Um, but basically it just like curves down. So it covers a little bit more of your stomach, but you still get sort of like a higher uh, cut at your waist. And, uh, I wore this already maybe like at least 10 times, 12 times. I wore it out multiple times. I would wear it even just hanging out at the house because since it's two by two rib, it's like extremely stretchy and comfy. And this one is the perfect like wear out to dinner kind of winter sweater. One thing that I have not done yet, I haven't machine washed it. So I don't know. <laughs> that was kind of the point of me choosing the yarn was that I wanted to be able to machine wash it because I figured it's like worn very close to the body. Um, but I haven't done it yet because I'm scared because I love that sweater so much. And it was kind of a slog to knit through the sleeves at least in two by two rib. I did it on like a very short circular needle and it was just pretty crampy for my hands. So like, I don't want to mess it up and have to redo anything on it. But um, I love that one and I've worn it a ton. I think it's, I mean, I'll show. I did like a styling video on Instagram for it or like a reel that shows a bunch of different outfits you can wear. Um, I think I posted it as a short too. So anyway, I find that one classy, cute, very, very easy to style. And the next thing that I finished was this Knit Picks Dishy bag. This is my summertime tote bag pattern. And I made it in Knit Picks Dishy because they sent out like a, um, a call for designers to make something in Knit Picks Dishy and it might get featured on the on their like designer portal. So this is in three colors of their Knit Picks Dishy. How many times am I gonna say Knit Picks Dishy? Um, I clearly, you can see from the strands, I haven't used this one yet. Um, I think that's a couple of reasons. I already have a couple of summertime tote bags that I had made with my Daisy color chart and my Gingham color chart. I chose to make this one in cherry because I added that to the pattern after lunch and I actually made a cherry version and gave it away in a giveaway. So I wanted one for my own. But the reason I haven't used this yet is I haven't had the chance to add a stone lining to it. Um, I don't have a sewing machine and I had been borrowing my boyfriend's mom's, but I gave it back to her. So I need to get that back to add a lining to this. I just really like to have a lining with mine because it makes it a lot like sturdier. You know that nothing will like stick out from between the stitches or like tug on the floats or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's the deal with this one. I think I will wear it for sure this summer. I don't know. I have a cherry wallet and I love to match <laughs> with that. I made these two little bags. So this, I ended up turning into the baguette pattern and this was with Lily sugar and cream yarn scraps that I had from like previous tote bags that I made. And then I duplicate stitch the cherries. I love that the cherries are like mirror images of each other. I use this one a little bit. I've brought it uh, when I was in Miami briefly in the spring. So this was in like March, I brought this one and used it, but um, I don't know, it's been very cold here since then. So now that it's starting to heat up a little bit more, I feel like this is definitely like a little summery bag to bring out to like a, I don't know, to dinner at the cafe or something with you. But yeah, I haven't really worn this one that much yet, but I plan to a lot more. And then this is the second version that I made in Knit Picks Dishy, 
which was left over from the cherry tote bag. And I did the heart embroidery this time because I have like several charts in the pattern. Um, I haven't used this one yet. It's a little bit smaller than the original one because this yarn is a little bit like lighter weight, even though they both say that they're, wor they're worsted. I feel like this one is a little bit on the lighter end um, and I haven't finished sewing in all the ends yet. I was thinking about giving this as a gift to someone and then I was like, I don't know, will she actually like it? I'm a very indecisive gift giver. So maybe I'll give it as like a giveaway at some point. My next tank is what I decided to call the Arrivederci tank. And this one is in Wool and the Gang Shiny Happy Cotton. Um, it's a combination of two by two rib and one by one rib. And the front or back, it's like, I kind of made it to be reversible. One side has straps that attach by buttons. And then the other side has a button close in the front. Um, I haven't worn this one yet just because when I finished it in like February, March, it was nowhere near warm enough. Um, I feel like this is the perfect like spring summer top because it is cotton, but it's like a little bit heavier of a cotton. So yeah, I didn't really have a chance to wear it yet. And I got a little bit stalled on making a pattern for this one because I, I don't know. <laughs> I started second guessing myself over, over whether or not it should actually be reversible or if I should like construct it differently so that um, it's not just like a flat tube top and it has like can go up higher in the front or lower in the back because some people like that but I don't know I originally made this one to just be super basic with like no shaping because the ribbing is so stretchy so maybe I should just stick with that and just release it as a pattern as it is I don't know let me know your thoughts I also thought about like should I get rid of this side and should I just make it all a tube where the straps just connect with buttons and then you could wear it as a tube top if you can't tell, I get like major analysis paralysis sometimes. I feel like sometimes releasing a pattern into the world is like a little bit vulnerable. And I start second guessing myself being like, is this the best one that I could do? Or will someone be unhappy with it? Like, honestly, I feel like someone will always be unhappy with anything. So I need to kind of release myself from that. But yeah, I'd love to know people's thoughts on what to do with a pattern for this one. Um, I also added some elastic crocheted along the top. And the reason for that is this is kind of a heavier cotton. So I just wanted something that will like fully snug it in. The ribbing is obviously stretchy, but I just wanted to give it like an extra security at the top, I guess. Um, but I feel like it worked pretty well. So I'm definitely a convert to adding elastic to my knits now. The next one that I finished, this one was, I started on a trip back home from Miami and um, this one is in Drops Cotton Merino. This one was like bottom up from the bust and then top down from below the bust. Let me see, I've worn this one, I think like four times. The one thing that I'm unhappy with is I wish that I had knitted it at a slightly tighter gauge. I don't know if it's that easy to see, but yeah, actually it is for sure. You can literally see my face through it. So I, my problem here was I knitted it the swatch flat and then I knit a little bit looser in the round. And I think I just like wasn't really noticing as I was doing it, how much looser it would be. And it has a little bit of negative ease. So then of course it's stretching a little bit when you put it on and that makes it so that it's easier to see through. So that was a little bit disappointing. I haven't decided if I'm going to re-knit this one. In theory, um, I'm not really bothered by the ribbing because I find that that, I don't know, just isn't very noticeable. But the top, the bust section, much more noticeable because like if you're wearing a bra or if you're not, you can see either way. Um, Actually, I haven't found it super noticeable if I wear a dark bra with it, but I like to have the option to not wear a bra. So I would feel a little bit indecent not wearing a bra with this one. I might just re-knit the top of this one with a slightly tighter gauge because I did knit it bottom up from the bust. So that would kind of fix this one. And I also wanted to release a pattern for this one, but I needed to like re-swatch and redo the math with a tighter gauge because I don't know. I want, I want anyone to be able to wear it without a bra. Um, so yeah, that's the deal with this one, but I have still worn it. I think it's just like a very nice, simple, cute top. It's just very like, I don't know, cute with jeans, cute with a skirt. This next one, I talked about this one in a podcast quite a bit. Um, this was just kind of a free-handed tank. It has like a boat neck in the front and then a very low scoop back that has these buttonholes along it so that you can like lace the straps a bunch of different ways. The top is made in gloss fingering from Knit Picks. And then the straps are Knit Picks Luminance, which is 100% mulberry silk. So it's like super, super soft and silky. I messed up the neckline shaping of this one quite a bit. 
So I'm not really sure exactly what I want to change, but I feel like a couple things are wrong. The top is maybe a little bit too loose. Like I think I needed to do more decreases. The shaping is like a little bit square. And I kind of think that there's a slight problem with going from like the thickness here to the thinness here. I think I need uh, kind of like sturdier straps. So I haven't really decided what to do about that because I love the contrast of the silky straps against this like matte material. And silk is kind of annoying to, to knit with. So I thought maybe I could hold it like triple and just knit like ribbed straps that are thicker. I'm not sure, but um, I haven't worn this one yet, but I would really, really like to. I think this is also like, of all the things I've made, maybe my boyfriend's favorite. <laughs> um, so I wish I could wear it on a date nights. I need to revisit it, but I just kind of wanted a break from it because I don't know. I like to put projects in timeout a little bit if they're frustrating me. And then I revisit them when I'm like, no, I'm, I'm reinvigorated and like I want to finish it more than I want to avoid it. The next thing that I made was um, another sample of my Thine Own top. So this is like a made to measure pattern um, that I came up with. I made the first sample at the end of last year and then I made this one with Hedgehog Fibers uh, DK Superwash and that was like recovered or reused from a sweater that I had made. Um, this one I haven't worn yet. I think I just like the color of my other one better. And this one I experimented with doing um, vertical bust starts above the bust too. And I think it's just a little bit too shaped around the bust. Um, for me personally, I ended up updating the pattern to have not to not have vertical bust starts above it. So, um, but I think this one, I just like was trying it on again yesterday. I tried styling it with this little mohair ribbon around like a tube top and then the ribbon the mohair has some like little pearls that I added into the knitting and I think that's kind of cute it gives me some like mermaid core vibes a little bit like coral reef um it does have straps that you can attach but I don't know I'm kind of into this and I think that this color with the little pearl details is really pretty so I do think that I'll wear that more this spring so next I have the prep school pullover so this one is Wool in the Gang Shiny Happy Cotton. I had bought this yarn forever ago and then I finally added these um, ivory stripes from like a previous scrap project and I love this. I've worn this, I don't know, probably at least six times so far. I think it's especially good for like a spring layer when you want to wear a layer but like you're not, it would be too hot to wear like a full wool sweater. Um, so I'm actually really happy to have this added to my wardrobe. And I feel like the stripes give it this sort of like nautical vintage preppy look to me, which is why I called it the prep school pullover. Plus something about the two by two rib. Um, yeah, so this one I think I'll wear a lot this summer, like throw it on over shorts when you're like, I don't know, I'm going out to sit by the lake at night or something like that. Um, like a good sweater to wear to a bonfire, I think. And it's machine washable, so I don't know if anyone else has ever made the mistake of wearing something to a bonfire that was not machine washable, but I had to like quarantine a leather jacket of mine for honestly like a month because it smelled so much like smoke. So yeah, machine washable, we love that. Um, also great if you're like, you know, wearing sunscreen and stuff in the summer, you wanna be able to wash it out after. So I'm really happy with this one. So next is another of my Thine Own samples. I actually finished this one on a train to New York. So it is definitely more cropped than my other two. I think it's like a smidge too cropped potentially, but um, I really wanted to wear it out to dinner that night. And I started the project on the train, like maybe just at the bus line. So I really was like racing to finish this one. And I can't believe I actually did. Um, it has the detachable straps too. I had just taken it off to um, experiment with like wearing it as like a halter ribbon. I need to make a video showing different ways you can style it before it releases, which will be end of May. Um, Cause it's just really fun to play around with different ways to wear it. This one is using Barocco Renew yarn, which is like a wool, viscose, nylon, and like 5% cashmere. It feels really nice on the skin though. So I've already worn this one. I wore it on my New York trip, like two or three days. <laughs> I was there for a week, so you're allowed to do a little outfit repeating with different friend groups, but I'm really happy with it. I also wove some elastic through the top band, so it's easier to wear as a tube top this summer. Okay, so next I have this one that I have been calling the Dolce Vita tank in my head. This one, I swear, is like my pride and joy right now. So I posted a design vlog on my YouTube, so check that out if you wanna see a lot more about like the inspiration behind this one, etc. 
Um, but I just got really into the idea of this like V-shaped, almost like a halter neck, but have the V actually go through a hole in the front fabric. Um, so it actually passes through the front before connecting in the back. And you can see um, there's some elastic that I wove through the straps here. Um, this is just done very simply with like just an elastic thread and a tapestry needle. But again, I'm like all in on adding elastic to knits lately. And uh, yeah, I wore this one. So I finished it um, finished it right before my trip to New York, New York. I wore it on the trip. I wore it out to a bar. I've just worn it a ton uh, since I made it. I think that like, especially in this red color, this is Wool in the Gang Shiny Happy Cotton in True Blood Red, which I had mostly as a leftover, like the first top half, you can kind of see the line of the color of the dye lot change, but that's okay. It's not very noticeable in person, but um, I had most of this as like scraps from a previous project from last summer, but it's so comfortable. This cotton is so soft. Um, I'm really happy with the length of it. It's like just the right length to wear with high-waisted things without being too cropped for it. Um, I think it looks really cute with denim. I think it'll look really cute with like linen pants. This I think is just gonna be like probably one of my most worn tops this summer. There's something that feels, um, I don't know, a little bit retro and a little bit glamorous of the V front. I just think it's like an impactful neckline, but since it's cotton and it's like a little bit chunkier, this is like a heavy worsted weight. Um, that makes it like casual at the same time. That is like my, always my sweet spot of any clothing is like, looks a little bit girly and a little bit glamorous, but is very wearable. And like also you just wear it with jeans and feels like casual enough. But yeah, these are all of the pieces that I've made so far this year. I feel pretty happy looking back on the stuff that I've made so far this year. I feel like there's sort of two themes. One is the very like romantic ballet inspired pieces. And then I feel like I have sort of like the, I don't know, a little bit vintage retro feeling for me with some of the ribbing, um, like my red, the red top, the um, blue tank tops, the prep school pullover. So it is kind of funny. I feel like, does anyone else feel like they have sort of like competing aesthetics that they're really into? I think those are kind of the two. One is like 60s, 70s, slightly vintage, and then and a little bit preppy. And then the other one is like romantic ballet inspired. I think those are always like competing in my brain space, I guess. But it is kind of funny to like look back on the things that I've made and feel like um, I see those like two almost like mini collections in my mind. It feels, it feels great to like look back and see, um, wow, I made a lot of things that I really like this year and I've worn a lot of them so far. So I hope that continues. And, um, and I'd be curious to hear like which of those kind of themes is more inspiring to you. Like which of these, I guess, speaks more to your personal style, the sort of like ballet inspired, very like feminine pieces or a little bit more of the slightly more casual retro um, ribbed pieces. Just curious. I think if I had to pick two favorites of the year so far, it would be my black Prima pullover, the long sleeve ribbed one, and then the red halter neck Dolce Vita. I think those two are just like going to be my most worn of the winter slash fall and of the summer and spring. So thanks so much for hanging out with me through the whole way. And if you are new here, I'd love it if you subscribed, you come out and hang out again on my knitting videos. I post every Friday. I share a lot of project updates, things I'm designing, kind of a look behind the scenes of designing. And then I also share some like patterns based off of different themes that I think are really cute to style. So stay tuned. I'm always open to new video ideas too. And yeah, I'll see you next time.